What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today on Madden NFL 19 franchise mode for another rebuild this time of the Miami Dolphins and I'll tell you if you like them realistic style this is probably not going to be the video for you. They are a 75 overall. The second worst overall in the entire game along with the Colts, along with the Jets I believe, and along with the Giants. The Bills are a 75 but other than that I think everyone is higher than uh than the Dolphins besides their teams that I mentioned previously here you have the Jets you have the awful Giants and of course we're doing the Dolphins today there's a lot of old players on the team that I don't want anymore so even though you have a lot of talent like Rashad Jones Cameron Wake Josh Sitton these are not exactly young talented players we're gonna get into this roster breakdown in just a minute here but uh yeah if you guys could please try to hit for you know one or two thousand likes that'd be sick and uh yeah definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new but let's go ahead and get into this so this is the team we have a number of good young players that we're gonna look to build around larmy mr gas mask tunsil is gonna be one of those guys josh Sitton, he's in his 30s by now 32 years old so that star development is nice but he's gonna be an 85 by the end of the year maybe even lower so i'm looking to trade josh Sitton. daniel kilgore is bad who's this ted it is ted larson he is not good at all and we got Juwan James, who's also pretty sick, along with Laramie Tunsil. We got Mike Kosicki, second round draft pick by the Dolphins this past year. He's got quick development. What are your ratings looking like? 85 speed is fantastic to start off. He was great at the combine. Uh, and he should have pretty good jumping as well. Did I miss it? Where's your jumping? Are they not showing jumping? Or I'm, I'm, I'm blind, probably, right? Where is jumping? I'm blind. I don't No, I don't think it's there. I don't see it. Did you imagine if I just miss it? I don't know why. I can't see it. Let's go down to his rating and see what jumping actually is. I'm just curious more than anything at this point. He's got 94 jumping, so that is pretty high. I would have noticed that if that was down there, but that's going to be a, a good trait that he has. We also have AJ Derby, Gavin Escobar. Probably look to get rid of those guys if they even get moved at all. Uh, Isaac Asiata on the line. Um, no one is really notable. Sam Young. I think it's Zach Syrup. Syrup. Excuse me, Zach. Zach Sturrup. We also have Danny Amendola. We're looking to move him. We have Kenny Stills can't catch. See see that? See what I'm doing there? All right. He's 26. Quick development. I like that. Albert Wilson got signed in the offseason. Got Isaiah Ford. Of course, Devontae Parker. We're going to look to build around. And then uh, with Jerry and Grant. Jakeem Grant. Yikes. Screwed that one up. Kenyon Drake is the running back. Drafted Kalen Balaj this past year. And then I have Sonoris Perry. Frank Gore might be like 50 or 60 years old at this point so we're probably gonna look to move him his ratings are bad no one's gonna want him so he's just gonna be on the team and then a quarterback we got ryan Tannehill, brock osweiler brick osweiler looking not so good in this profile picture by the way he's he looks like he's seen better days i'm not gonna be honest or uh, i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna be honest bryce petty not exactly starting quarterback material but neither is ryan Tannehill. he's a 78 overall who's 30 years old with quick development he's not the guy for me and then defensively it's even worse kiko alonso hasn't really been good since his rookie year raekwon mcmillan is an excellent building piece uh we have stefan anthony who's kind of been weird he was taken by the saints at the end of the first round a couple years ago and hasn't really developed into much rashad jones is gonna have to get moved he's 30 years old so even though he's a 91 overall that's going to drop and drop and drop. And by the time this team can compete, he might be like an 82 overall. So I probably won't want him starting. Mick Fitzpatrick was taken in the first round. He's going to be an excellent uh, guy at free safety for us. TJ McDonald could move over to strong safety. Walt Akins isn't great. Uh, and then at cornerback, we got Bobby McCain. We got Xavier Howard, Tony Lippett, Cordrea Tankersley. Um, those are pretty average cornerbacks. And then the defensive line is super old. William Hayes, super old. Charles Harris is young. We're going to look to make him start over William Hayes. Don't want him starting. Jordan Phillips is young. We got Devon Godshaw as well. I'll probably start him over Akeem Spence, who we might look to trade if we can. And we have Cam Wake and Robert Quinn and Alan Branch as well. Cameron Wake is 36 years old. He will either retire after year one or regress incredibly. So even though I love Cameron Wake, one of my favorite players in the NFL has been, he's an absolute beast. I gotta trade Cam Wake. It just doesn't make any sense to keep him. And then Robert Quinn, he's up near 30 probably at this point as well. 28, quick development, only an 81 overall. No block shedding. 
probably going to look to move him as well. So this is going to be a complete gutting of the team. I'm sorry if you're a Dolphins fan and you like a lot of these players. A lot of them are not going to be safe. Kenyon Drake, I don't think we talked about him much. Very good building piece. Excited about him. And we might as well use this piece on Devontae Parker to upgrade him to an 82 overall. Because he will absolutely start this year. 100%. Looking better already. All right, I'm trading a lot here. But you got to understand really what's going on. And I think I traded for Bobby Wagner in one of my last videos, but he's just a beast. So Josh Sitton, 32, not a fast developer. Cameron Wake, 36, not a fast developer. Rashad Jones, 30 years old, and he's 91 overall. Bobby Wagner is going to be a mainstay in our linebacking core. He's a 97 overall. I know it feels like we're trading a lot. We're not really giving up too much. No one that would play a big impact in our team. We just got the highest overall player on our entire roster by quite a bit. He is 28, so if he regresses, it'll be another year or two before he's down uh, a little bit. So we're going to be in business with Bobby Wagner. Awesome player to have. Now we got to trade 33-year-old William Hayes, 32-year-old Danny Amendola. This is not a team built to win right now. It's a team built to kind of win a few games so they don't look as bad as they really are. Wow, that went through really easily. I wish I would have tried that out a little bit more, but William Hayes, Danny Amendola is going to get us Micah Hyde from the Buffalo Bills. So that's going to be our starting strong safety to replace uh, Rashad Jones. And he is arguably better for us because he's a higher overall. He is significantly younger. So Micah Hyde and his contract's way better. That's just, that's just a money trade right there to get Micah Hyde. And our secondary is coming along really nicely. I'm going to trade Bobby McCain too. I don't like that contract very much. Next trade is another big one. TJ McDonald, Bobby McCain, and a third round pick for Levante David as our linebacking core is coming along together very, very nicely. Of course, now we got Bobby Wagner. Levante David is going to join that group. So we go from having such a mediocre linebacking core and defense overall to having Minka Fitzpatrick. We've gotten younger. We've gotten better. Raekwon McMillan, Bobby Wagner, and Levante David is going to be our starting linebacker group. I'm not sure if I want to play a 3-4 or a 4-3 yet. It depends what kind of trades go on throughout the rest of this thing. We're looking in very, very good shape. I want to get some more draft picks now because I want to build through the draft. I know we've made a lot of trades so far uh, for, you know, big name players, but I want to primarily build through the draft. And in order to do that, I'm going to need a lot of draft picks. So let me get a first. Let me get a second. Let me, let me see what I can do here. Robert Quinn, Ryan Tannehill is going to get me Chris Jones from the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to upgrade more on the defensive line. I think primarily focus on offense throughout the draft. I am still looking to trade a lot of our offense away if we can. Frank Gore is not going to have a lot of value. But even though the Dolphins brought in Albert Wilson from the Chiefs, funnily enough, his contract is bad. It's a bad contract. It's probably, what, five, five a year, something like that. It is cap it of 6.55 overall. Bonus about four. So... That's going to go up to 7.5 by 2020. The thing is, Albert Wilson's not particularly good, at least in the game. He's an okay receiver in real life, coming off a pretty good season. He's a 77 overall. He is 26. I don't want Albert Wilson. His stats are just bad. So I'm going to look to trade him. We'll rock out. We got Leonte Carew. I kind of forgot he existed. Uh, but Albert Wilson's got to get moved. And... Um, I mean, other than that, I, I feel like the trades we've made have been pretty good so far. The Chris Jones one was a little weird. It, I, it really depends on what kind of defense I want to run. 3-4 might end up being our best bet. Albert Wilson, Akeem Spence, and Stefan Anthony is going to get me a 1 and a 2 from the Cincinnati Bengals. Just what I talked about with wanting to uh, just garner a ton of draft picks in order to make this very successful. We have a ton of cap room now. We're going to be able to be extremely active in free agency to target some of the best players in free agency. And I'm not quite done yet. I'm just trying to just leech any possible value from this team in order to make it better over the long term. So year one is going to be probably pretty bad because we've got not a whole lot of redeeming qualities in offense to score points. And that's a big part of winning football games. I'm not sure if you guys knew. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to ditch a lot of these terrible contracts as well. And probably the last trade I'll make is AJ Derby, Daniel Kilgore, and a two next year for a one and a three from the Buffalo Bills. They don't want that. I'm going to have to offer a one. Or if I just had the one and I could probably get a four. 
Do I want the four? I probably want the four. AJ Derby, Daniel Kilgore, and a two next year gets me a one and a four this year. That is accepted. AJ Derby, I guess, carrying a whole lot of weight there, and Daniel Kilgore maybe going to be Eric Wood's replacement. Not quite sure, but this team is pretty terrible, but that's all right. I'm just looking for a good impact from some of our defensive players, and I got to figure out my scheme fit because I'm going to really try experimenting with that over the course of this rebuild and get it perfectly to how I want it in terms of scheme fit so everyone's playing up to their highest overall. That's going to be the look. So I guess we're going to rock out in a 4-6. So a lot of players in the box. We fit that defense pretty well. And then offensively, uh, vertical power run seems to be maybe where we can go. We're, we'll try vertical zone run. And um, I don't know. What's a good playbook for that? It doesn't even matter. So there's no playbook in the game that works with a vertical zone run specifically. So we're going to rock out with vertical zone run because it fits our scheme. I want to try that out a lot. And we are going to rock out with LAC, Los Angeles Chargers, who have power run vertical passing, which is close enough to vertical zone. Vertical passing is like 85, but I want to try 88, get everyone playing up to their highest overall, uh, if that has any impact. But this is going to be the team for year number one. I'm going to simulate to the midseason mark, re-sign some players. It's a bad team. It really is. I'm going to start Raekwon McMillan at right outside linebacker, though. He might even go up to uh, 74, 75 overall with that change to play right outside linebacker. He's going to be a really exciting player. I hope he has a sixth season because this is like not his rookie year, but it'll be the first year that he plays. He tore his ACL his rookie year. He goes up to a 77 overall. And Levante David's a right outside linebacker, so he might move over. He doesn't. Defensive line, we got Chris Jones, Devon Godshaw, Jordan Phillips, and Charles Harris. It's not a bad squad, but let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. We actually are not as bad as I thought we would have been at the midseason mark. Three and five, currently good enough for second in the AFC East after a big loss to the Houston Texans, 26 to six. Glad to know our offense is putting up crazy points. Jawan James is a free agent, as is Frank Gore, Gavin Escobar, Jordan Phillips. I don't think I want to re-sign him. There's no one really too good here outside of Juwan James, who I absolutely will not let test free agency. So Juwan James is going to be returning. The rest, I'm fine on for now. We'll see if any different developments happen, but for right now, no way. Uh, and I could upgrade these players right now. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to hold on and see where we are at the end of the season. A lot of guys have won. Devon Godshaw with two. That's interesting. That might even get more XP if I, if I boost him now. I might boost... Uh, specific select players i am going to go to increase player weekly goal xp and buy that and um do i want to upgrade anybody right now I, I think offensively i'm probably good i want this defense to step up devon godshaw what are you particularly good at liked him a lot at lsu he needs to be better it's not a bad he's, just, he's pretty good overall actually let's just work on run stopping and speed rusher Plus three block sheds big, and let's go speed rusher. Takes him up to a 76 overall, and that is a pretty big upgrade, to be honest. Plus two finesse moves, 81 finesse moves, 80 block shedding. I'm losing my voice badly. I think you guys kind of heard it. Didn't crack, but it went, like, kind of weird there. Uh, yeah, and enough rambling. Mika Fitzpatrick has four. Wow. I will see you guys for the playoffs. So we, of course, did not make the playoffs. We just lost 28-0 to the Bills. You guys can't see it in the top left. We did finish 7-9. and nine. So maybe this scheme fit has a lot to do with record. We're going to keep we're gonna keep an eye on that over the course of this thing. The Bills went 3-13, and 13, man. 7-9 and nine is much better than I thought we would have performed. Let's check out the stats. Let's see who did what. Patriots had a great record. But Brock Osweiler, he was... Um, not horrific, I guess, but also not even close to good. About 4,000 yards passing, 22 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 56 completion percentage. It's a weird season, if I'm being honest. Rushing, Kenyon Drake was uh, very average, but, you know, the offensive line was poor. 819 yards, 6 touchdowns, only 3.7 per carry. Receiving, Kenny Stills almost had 1,000 yards, 2 touchdowns, 7 touchdowns from Mike Kosicki, who had a great season, as did Jakeem Grant from the slot. 916 yards, seven touchdowns for him. Blocking, Juwan James was not good. Laramie Tunsil was also not good, letting up more than a sack a game. 
Bobby Wagner, 156 tackles, led the team. 110 for Levante David. Tackles for a loss, 15 from Devon Godshaw, who had a season. 10 for Chris Jones, 8 for Jordan Phillips and Vincent Taylor. Quarter, uh, QB sacks, though. Quarterback sacks. Eight and a half for G Devon Godshaw. That's a season. Five for Levante David. Four for Chris Jones. Three and a half for Charles Harris. I need better production out of him. Like, really, really badly. Interceptions. Cordrea Tankersley had four. Xavier Howard with three. Micah Fitzpatrick with two. He might make a case for defensive rookie of the year, although I doubt he gets it. It's probably going to be Raekwon. This should be not Raekwon. Probably going to be Roquan Smith per usual as Levante David forces 10 fumbles and Bobby Wagner forces 8. These are ridiculous numbers and should be toned down in simulation for uh, EA. If you're watching this, look into that because those are ridiculous numbers. No defensive touchdowns. Let's check out awards. We are middle of the pack in offense. Tom Brady wins MVP. Lamar Jackson, second of the 12-4 Baltimore Ravens. Good Lord. Killing it. Who am I? What team am I doing? Dolphins, AFC. Offense player of the year, Tom Brady. No Dolphins. Defensive player of the year goes to Dante Hightower. Bobby Wagner at number five. Levante David at number eight. Offensive rookie of the year, of course, is Lamar Jackson. Mike Kosicki at number four. Durham Smythe at number eight. Defensive rookie of the year is Tremaine Edmonds. Of course, Roquan Smith probably won it for the NFC, as he, of course, did. It's just what happens. And uh, Dolphins, Minka Fitzpatrick at number four. Not terrible. We do have some upgrades to spend. I'm mainly worried about Kenny Stills. Wish Devontae Parker had more. Mike Kosicki's in an all right spot. And then Kenyon Drake is pretty cool as well. Defensively, have a few XP points to spend. I think Devon Godshaw somehow slowed down, which is uh, odd to say the least. But Minka, Cordrea, Tankersley, we're in a good spot. I'm going to simulate now to the offseason season. We have a lot of money to spend in free agency. We got to bring in somebody big to help out this team. Offensive line is in a bad spot. Jordan Phillips, I don't care about. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So free agency, we need to sign some big names or at least big talent. I don't care how big the name is. So Trevor Williams is here per usual. Jason McCourty's one I haven't seen that much. Corey Moore is pretty high overall. Dante Fowler is here. He's not a scheme fit. How is he not? What is our scheme fit for uh, right end? Can I see? Probably can pretty easily if I go to right end. So we are power rush. In a 4-6? Really? All right. William Hayes is here and down to an 83 overall from an 88. I think it definitely made sense to trade him when we did. Quandre Diggs, hook him horns, listed as a strong safety now. Didn't know he was playing that. We could play him at nickel cornerback very easily. And that night, that might not be the worst thing to do. Brian Arakpo's here. Another hook em horns. Tyrod Taylor, a.k.a. Tyrod, apparently. Never going to call him that. But other than that, not a whole lot of talent here. Shout out to Dez Bryant. And Trevor Williams accepted our contract offer. It made so much sense to go after him as our defense is now becoming really, really solid. Our defensive line is improving, uh, led, of course, by Chris Jones. But Devon Gottschall had an insane season last year. We're going to hold on to him. We got Charles Harris as well. We got Raekwon McMillan. We got Bobby Wagner, Levante David. We're in a good spot. We really are. And Trevor Williams being a scheme fit, I do not mind. Plus four zone coverage on that boost for Micah Hyde. That was a very, very big one for the hybrid. 97 zone coverage now. Plus two speed. That's a huge, huge increase for Mickey Fitzpatrick. He's up to 93 speed, 90 zone coverage, 86 overall as the team i'm trying to get them all to work into the scheme fit because we're up to 91 4 6 scheme fit now vertical zone run we're not quite there we also don't have a quarterback but uh other than that not too bad so i'm in between trying to decide about these quarterbacks for right now we got you know which name is going to be more annoying for me to pronounce across the, <laughs> the course of this we got gordon bjornson or seth stitzer i hate both of those <laughs> We also got Connor Cameron, which sounds nice, but he's also way worse. Devontae Kitchens is here as well. He might be pretty fast. 4-4-7. Four, four, oh, I'm tempted. Gordon Bjornsson's the best for us. And Seth Stitzer is also not terrible. Devontae Kitchens could be sick just because great throw power, incredible speed. This is Lamar Jackson 2.0, a.k.a. Michael Vick 3.0. Also, this center is ridiculous. I don't know if you guys ever heard me say that before. He put up 41 reps 
of 225 at the combine he's also incredibly quick he's got great top three skills you might see me draft a center a balding center at 21 out of lsu 41 reps is ridiculous it's not a record it's not even close really to a record i believe the record is steven pie with 49 but that's a lot all right time for the nfl draft we do have a few first round picks we have three number one overall number five overall and number 12 overall if i'm not mistaken we also have uh two second round picks two fourth round picks a fifth a sixth and a seventh and i'm taking a quarterback number one overall the question is which quarterback now they're gonna be they're basically two schools of thought here it's between gordon bjornson and seth stitzer who are basically the same player uh except we know a little bit more about gordon bjornson and he fits the scheme so gordon bjornson makes the most sense here he's pretty fast too he really he's the pick gordon bjornson is and then Devonte kitchens just looks like he could be so so sick so fast great top three skills even as well for a mobile quarterback for a scrambler but he's also got an arm we just don't know much about his accuracy he's gonna be so good i really do want to take him but i was playing all these games where we'll play the moments in the playoffs but Devonte kitchens would be the pick for the sake of the scheme fit and i know he's gonna be good overall off the bat i'm taking gordon bjornson number one overall he's a 79 overall superstar development is exactly what i like to see superstar is so big he's got 91 throw power 82 deep accuracy 86 medium 89 short he's an absolute monster i don't know how that works out to a 79 overall because he is a beast we'll definitely make sure to check out the other quarterbacks i Devontae, like kitchens is going to be a monster just it didn't make sense to take him seth stitzer is also a 79 overall he goes to the giants and Devontae kitchens probably will still be on the board as he is i can't take him i, I i'm not going to take back to back quarterbacks i am however going to take a cornerback in othniel carson he fits our scheme very well he's very fast and it mainly above all he fits the scheme and that's basically the theme of this episode he is an 80 overall ranked number seven in the class we took him at number five 80 overall in man to man he's got 95 speed 81 man only 73 zone 85 press 94 excel 69 catching nice 48 block shed he is he's pretty good although i, I think like the quarterback's better that we took in terms of uh, overall even though the numbers don't match up 79 clearly uh, i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say not as high as 80 i am taking the center though he looks like an absolute monster i can't pass up we need a center he is an 80 overall ranked number 12 we took him at number 12 fits uh, our scheme not that well he also he looks huge at 6'4 314 looks like kyle long almost 93 strength 86 run block 78 pass block it's pretty much all you need to know 84 impact blocking 82 lead block 71 speed he is a beast new starting center clearly i didn't see his development it probably wasn't anything crazy you gotta go with positional need and we need offensive line help kenny stinson out of temple is going to be exactly that for us great strength really good top three skills he's gonna be a 76 overall ranked number 42 we took him at like 30 something um and the double arm brace nose like paint tape whatever he's rocking there it's a very interesting look is all i can say 86 strength 83 run block 76 pass block 85 lead block 85 impact blocking what's his speed because he will be a pulling guard 68 not bad so i'm between two defensive tackles right here we got antoine mills and we got henry hodge i'm leaning slightly towards antoine mills 36 reps got good block shedding pretty good power moves he does fit the scheme and then henry hodge we know he's overall like potentially higher ceiling also 36 reps fits the scheme i'm gonna go antoine mills defensive tackle hopefully he's good enough to start right away he's gonna be a 75 overall with normal took him at uh number 60 something he's ranked number 63 in the class only normal dev 90 strength 80 block shed 79 power moves he's a good player just not as good as i wanted him to be i was really hoping he'd be like 77 that would have been nice unfortunately it's not and we do i thought that was a third round pick that was in the second Ooh, that was not in the 60s that was in like the 40s and here i like what morgan joseph brings to the table out of unc he's got great top three skills he's just really not athletically gifted but i like his skills enough to take him He's gonna be a 74 overall only normal development 
does fit the scheme 86 speed 82 man 77 zone 77 press uh he's a good slot cornerback honestly with his good tackling and the next pick has to be the offensive guard Dwayne Jeffers he's pretty good top three skills aren't great but he is very strong shouldn't be a very fast pulling guard he's a 74 overall only normal development I need to start seeing some quicks and some stars man he's ranked number 82 doesn't fit the scheme that well but he's got 89 strength 79 run block 78 pass block 78 lead block 83 impact blocking he's not terrible and uh will probably in a position where he has to start year one so I have nothing really scouted this far down so I'm just gonna trade back hopefully I pick up like a, a fifth next year or something a fourth that would work even better let's take it from the Dallas Cowboys also gonna trade down this pick for a fourth next year as well and then we have a seventh and uh I likely won't take it either because I think a fourth or a fifth is just way more valuable than a seventh this year when I don't have anybody scouted down here we took the value up near the top because we had a bunch of top draft picks needed to make use out of them and I will take a sixth from the Raiders next year but that's the draft so Devontae Kitchens is a 77 overall quick development we definitely made the right decision at QB um he is I mean clearly nowhere near as good for simulation at least to our quarterback just accuracy is nowhere close the arm's not there uh the only thing is he has 89 speed 88 break sack 87th row under pressure he is disgusting as a scrambling quarterback just I mean not what we're looking for and here's our draft class we did really well 79 overall quarterback uh with superstar development to be our new starter better than Ryan Tannehill we got off Neil Carson new starting cornerback to go along with uh the guys we already got there Roy Summers quick development as well Stinson I think is normal and it's normal down the board but we did well 79 80 80 76 75 74 74 it was a pretty good draft class and we'll see set uh, Seth Stitzer he's got quick development we took the right quarterback we really did uh he has comparable accuracy to our QB just not as good and superstar development is so so crucial to the development of a player and of course yeah Gordon Bjornsson's just better so we made the right call very good draft class I think the team is much improved for season number two got a new starting quarterback got wide receivers for him to throw to got an improved offensive line we're in business we are certainly in business new starters in a lot of places in a lot of places and everyone's working to our scheme fit as well the only guys that aren't quite there Charles Harris but he probably won't ever fit Bobby Wagner will make him fit if he gets more experience points Micah Hyde same thing uh, same thing with the skill points and then we're gonna have like 100% scheme fit outside of Charles Harris who I don't think we'll ever get there and then as far as vertical zone run goes I wonder if we wouldn't be better served switching schemes so vertical power run is an 85 percent match we just don't have the running back for that and we never will he's never going to be a power back so i think it's going to be in our best interest to work out of uh well the offensive linemen can be they can be changed i think vertical power run is is going to work the best for us or ver multiple where we had vertical zone run we would just need to work on the linemen to make them agile is that ever a possibility everyone else on the team works i think that certainly is so laramie tunsil already fits with what we need stinson how far away are you from agile not that far we need a couple of skill points for him we got uh roy summers not that far i want to say Dwayne jeffers four points off not incredibly far and then juan james he's pretty far off but i mean I think we're in a good spot I'm gonna simulate to the midseason mark and we're gonna see how this squad's doing I have high hopes I'm actually gonna simulate to the regular season first so I can get a little bit more coach XP and then use that on a position group and then I'm gonna simulate to the midseason mark so spending coach XP is gonna be the move we have 1600 which is gonna be enough for the O-line and that's kind of what I wanted anyway so we have a week four buy that's weird that is so weird any skill points I'm missing out on Menka Red tanker i'm gonna spend those before we go all right no major changes but we can set a season goal we had seven wins last time with a worse team and i can't get fired i'm gonna shoot for nine wins i don't know how simulation's gonna play 
I'm going to shoot for 10 wins. Worst case scenario, uh, we don't get the extra small coach XP boost. But mid-season mark it is. I have high hopes for this team, actually. If we could go 7-9 with a team that's trash, now a team that's much better could really serve us well. And look at the simulation speed. It's great. We are 0-7. Someone roll the uh, some, the curb your enthusiasm credits. What in the? F We're zero and seven. We didn't. We haven't won a game. Oh man. So I wonder if there's actually a better scheme fit than four six. Something tells me we're probably not going to find it, considering we're at ninety five percent. Yeah, it's just right end, and we're never going to have a power rusher player there unless we change. Or when I say change, I mean trade him for someone that does fit the scheme. And I don't know if 100% scheme fit would really even do all that much. And then offensively, things are not going that well. I mean, we're 0-7. Bobby Wagner's a free agent, impending. We got to re-sign him. Chris Jones, Kenyon Drake, Devontae Parker. We also have Larmy Tunsil, Xavier Howard here. We pretty much have no need for Xavier Howard at this point. I should have considered trading and we're going to be past the trade deadline at this point i believe it's we yeah, it's past week eight we're not going to have it as an option so bobby wagner needs to come back we're going to need chris jones for sure kenyon drake for sure Devonte parker for sure and then laramie tunsil probably so laramie tunsil is the only one i offered that declined he wants more money that's fine we got mad hack Devonte parker Kenyon Drake, Chris Jones, and Bobby Wagner all return. And those are very, very big re-signings. Because uh, if you guys love going completely winless in a season, this is the squad that apparently gets it done. So, shocker. Didn't make the playoffs after starting 0-7. We would finish 3-13. This, this season was not great, admittedly. Gordon Bjornsson had, had a very similar season, almost identical to Brock Osweiler, minus about 250, 300 yards or so. Rushing Kenyon Drake was terrible. What is going on with this team? I might have to change up the offensive strategy. Kenny Stills has 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Good season for him. Jakeem Grant also beasting in the slot as the slot receiver is apparently the overpowered position here. Blocking. How'd the offensive line do? Uh, eh, I don't like that at all. Defensively, Levante David had 162 tackles. Bobby Wagner with 156. Othniel Carson at 120. Tackles for loss, 15 from Chris Jones. Sacks, 7.5 for Levante David, 6.5 for Devon Godshaw, 4.5 for Charles Harris. Interceptions, 3 for B-Wags and Trevor Williams, 2 for Levante David, 1 for Micah Hyde. So we're not doing a lot defensively. Force fumbles, we're getting a ton still just from two guys. Bobby Wagner and Levante David combined for 11. Force fumbles, or excuse me, recoveries. We only had 2 out of 11 forced. Defensive touchdowns, we get one. It's Trevor Williams. And offensively, we're, we were the 28th ranked team in the entire NFL. 21st in defense. I don't know about this scheme fit business then. Ezekiel Elliott wins MVP. And shocker. You got uh, you got no, no uh, Dolphins in there. Tom Brady wins Offensive Player of the Year. No Dolphins. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Vince Williams. Okay. Uh, I get Levante David in there at number five. Bobby Wagner in there at number nine. Offensive Rookie of the Year does go to Gordon Bjornsson. You'd have to question why. I'm not sure. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Stephen Carey. Othniel Carson at number three. And no other Dolphins. So we, get a, we have a few points. Nothing crazy for anybody. We just have a few. Because, uh, I mean, we went three and 13. It's not, it's not really where you want to be. I'll eventually upgrade them probably before next season at some point so you guys can see the roster before season number three, which I think will be a playoff year. Uh, high hopes. High hopes for this team somehow. But Oh, Larmy Tunsil, that's right. Do I want to re-sign you? You have one point. He's playing down in confidence a lot. He fits the scheme. He's going to be up to about an 80 overall once we get that confidence back. And yeah, I'm probably going to re-sign him. Laramie Tunsil returns. Jakeem Grant, we're going to let go as well. Andre Branch, his regress from a 75 to a 67. So I'm not exactly chomping at the bit to re-sign him as the Eagles beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl 21-16. It was in the top left. You guys couldn't see. Take my word for it. Free agency. Give me Tyreek Hill. 
Ooh, Miles Jack doesn't really fit. He doesn't fit. I want it though. Now we could make Michael Brockers work at right end. It probably wouldn't make the most sense. Jalen Mills could be cool as well. Sheldon Rankins might be a big signing for us. That might be huge. He could play right end even. So Sheldon Rankins is going to reject our contract. I hate when that happens because I, you know, I wanted him. Because that makes our team better. Who ended up getting him? Let's see. The Dallas Cowboys. I offered more points and he just says, nah, I want a team that doesn't go 3-13. and 13, Even if it is in beautiful Miami, Florida. It's respectable. Randall Hurst out of the Ohio State University put up 45. He's also got great top skills as well. He might be somebody that we look to target. Frank Randall's interesting as well. Incredibly fast. Incredibly fast for 294. Not that strong. He could play right end though. Oh, Nick Cromartie out of Wisco is a baller. Says Roger Goodell. Uh-uh, not going to your dumb combine. I'm skipping it. His top three skills are very good. And he's going to be worth the third round pick. Yeah, he, for sure if I can. Draft time. We, of course, pick number one overall because we suck that badly. And there are some good players on the board. This is this is a, a, a draft pick I don't take. I'm going to trade this down. I have no offers, which means you got to make your own offers. And if anyone has two first round picks, that would be splendid. So no one had two ones. I am going to trade to the Buffalo Bills, though, acquiring their first round pick number eight overall and two second round picks. So that's actually really big for me because it gives us more to work with. We don't drop down that far. There's still going to be good value at number eight. It's definitely the move. So I am going to take Frank Randall. I think wide receiver is a pretty big need, but Frank Randall just looks too good to pass on. Incredibly athletic. 294. Not that strong. Hurts, but I'll play him at right end. Got great finesse moves. He's going to be a 78 overall with star development, ranked number 17. Couldn't take him at one. Only 68 block shed, but he's got 79 speed, 87 finesse move, 81 strength. This is a really, really weird defensive tackle. I think he's going to work really well at defensive end if that's what I want to do. I'm trading a second and a third for Andrew Norwell from the Jacksonville Jaguars. More inter-Florida, interstate trading as uh, we pick still here in the second round. I'm taking Cromartie. I don't want him to slip away. Even if he's bad, he's a good Xavier Howard replacement. Well, if he's bad, he's not. But I don't think he's going to be that bad. No combine. Great top three skills. I'm going to say he's at least a 77 overall. He is going to be a 77 overall, ranked number 26 in the class. We took him uh, here in the second round. He's got quick development. 85 speed is, is rough, but he's got 80 man, 85 zone, 81 press. He's technically sound for sure. He's a good nickel corner, good backup. Also, of course, Cromartie runs deep with cornerback blood. You look at Dominique Rogers Cromartie. You look at Antonio Cromartie. Maybe, maybe Nick is one of his 30 or 35 children. All right, CJ Bryant, maybe future right guard. 77 overall, normal development, ranked number 24. Of course, we took him in the fourth round. Definitely out of reach. And um, yeah, he's pretty good. Good run blocking, not a great pass blocker. But it is a fourth round, so I'm pretty pleased to take a first round caliber player here. And Fernando Skinner looks really good. Not extremely physically talented, but great two top skills that's exactly what i look for in defensive tackle he's gonna be a 74 overall normal development 88 strength 84 block shit 81 power moves he is certainly a pretty good player 66 speed could be better but he's gonna be back up so not worried about it and leroy harding is gonna be the pick here out of a m good top three skills good value 75 overall normal development of course we took him at uh wherever we did it's he's ranked number 60 we took him here late in the fourth, so it's a good value pickup. Need some more wide receiver depth, and we're going to back that up with another wide receiver pick, and that is going to be an Allen Bradley out of Eastern Michigan. Welcome to the squad, 73 overall, ranked number 116, so a lot worse than that previous wide receiver, but it is the fifth round. And backup running back, Demarcus Hollowell out of North Texas, 76 overall, normal development, ranked number 31. We took him here in the fifth round. 89 speed, 89 excel, 86 carrying, 83 ball carry vision, 81 elusiveness. He's got 77 catching, good route running. He is a very interesting player. We'll make for a solid backup. And that's the last pick I'm going to take. So draft recap, I think we had a pretty good draft. 
Got Frank Randall, who might play right end. We got a good backup cornerback. Good potential starting left guard if we want to go down that route. It was a very solid overall draft. Nothing crazy, honestly, but we didn't need anything crazy. We just needed people to come in and uh, start. I guess Bryant could start at right guard pretty easily, and he might actually do that. And we're getting Roy Summers trying to make him fit the scheme a little bit. I want to work this scheme fit angle as I get plus four pass block on that one. Not too bad. This confidence is, is really hurting everybody. So defensively, we have a 92% scheme fit for the 4-6 style defense here. And the rest, nothing really works that well. 4-6 is going to be what we do. So I've made a change to the team. At right end, we have Frank Randall. He was drafted as a defensive tackle. He's being moved over. Uh, where did he go? He's He wants to play left end. You're going to play right end. And I will change that manually in the depth chart. Charles Harris will likely be traded. Cromartie might move. Cordrea Tankersley might move. Most likely, it is going to be that draft pick Cromartie. We took him in the second round, Nick Cromartie. And I need a better scheme fit offensively. We have everybody works except for the offensive line. And I feel like that's an imperative part of the team. And if you go through here, you look at everything... Vertical power run looks like it makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't really run and shoot. Everyone works except for the quarterback and the running back. We need a receiving back in that in that design. It might be our best option. We gotta try something new. We could get our quarterback to be field general style. We absolutely could. I'm gonna try the run and shoot. So the thing is now none of our receivers work. And that's kind of a problem because wide receiver is an important position. They require the slot type. And I don't know if I don't know if run and shoot is gonna be our best bet. Vertical power run, we'd need a power back. But I think overall, that would make I think I think this makes most of our starters work better. Because we have a bunch of deep threats. Kenny Stills, Devontae Parker, our quarterback works. We just need really a, a new running back. I like Kenyon Drake though. He just doesn't fit the scheme anymore. Because we need a power back, and he absolutely is not that. Andrew Norwell is the only one on the offensive line that doesn't work, and it, he works pretty well. So, Kenny Stinson, a 1 and a 2, is a steep price to pay for Leonard Fournette, but I don't think it's an unfair one. Very, very good player. He's going to fit our scheme, which is really what I'm looking for. Didn't trade Charles Harris. Didn't trade Kenyon Drake. We traded two draft picks that could be very valuable but Leonard Fournette also is extremely extremely valuable and Kenyon Drake will now essentially be on the trade block and if I could package he and Charles Harris into something for maybe a defensive tackle a really good defensive tackle that would be ideal Kenyon Drake Charles Harris gets me Leonard Williams I know he's a left end he's gonna play defensive tackle for us and that is a really good defensive tackle, the former top five pick for the New York Jets. And he will, he has five skill points. Okay, that is not too bad. Pretty good face scan as well. He is going to be playing defensive tackle and he should be a monster on the defensive line. That is a huge trade. So he doesn't fit the scheme right now, but he's not far off. We just got a boost run stopper boost run stopper boost run stopper and then he's gonna fit the scheme and be a monster so that was actually just a fantastic trade for us boosting run stopper again is not gonna exactly get him all the way there he is going to be pretty close though 93 overall run stopper doesn't really fit the scheme but he fits the scheme he's pretty much right there and then Randall also doesn't exactly fit the scheme as he is a speed rusher right end I wonder what is the scheme fit here? Run stopper? It is. How good are you at stopping the run? Probably not very. 73. He's got great development though, so I'm going to start him. And the team is looking really, really solid. 91 scheme fit on defense, but again, that's like that's going to go up with Leonard Williams. And then offensively, we're 81 right now. Andrew Norwell is the only exception. I want to try out this experiment. This team is so good. 89 offense, 95 defense. I need development. And I need some guys to play well. I will see you at the midseason mark. Let us win games. All right, we're three and four. This is remarkable improvement, sadly, over last year. 
but we're actually in prime striking distance to take over the AFC East after a win against the Seahawks. Uh, gives us our third win. The top of the division has four wins. Also, interestingly enough, per usual, the second and third spot in the division also has the same number of wins. We're only one game back. Pretty much. We are in a fine position. This is a playoff team. We're making the playoffs this year. I'm going to say 100%. Leonard Fournette's a free agent. That's why he was uh, traded, I guess. Levante David, Kenny Stills, Raekwon McMillan, Cordray Tankersley, Devon Godshaw. Those are some names I want back. What is that? Six players that I need for sure? I think so. So everyone has been re-signed that I wanted to re-sign. Didn't touch Jerome Baker. Caleb Brantley's an interesting one. I didn't even know he was on the team. I thought he was still in Cleveland, and he probably is in real life. I don't know. But I'm going to use some of this XP. I'm going to make this team better. And I'm also going to experiment to see if uh, we can change the scheme fit. I don't know how we would. It's just backups at this point. All the starters fit the scheme really well. So, plus one speed for Juwan James, who eyes... His eyes might as well be red. They're so bloodshot. It's unbelievable, Juwan. It's amazing he hasn't been busted by uh, by the league for a drug test, or with a drug test so far. Gordon Bjornsson up to an 85. I'm going to need him to go off if we're going to do well here. All right, Leonard Williams is now officially a scheme fit, plus three to block shedding. So that puts us up to 95% on scheme fit. Was Micah Hyde ever a scheme fit? I guess not. Minka Fitzpatrick is casually a 95 overall. We're a 95 overall defense. 89 overall offense. To me, this is a team that can win this division. Just got to clutch up and actually do it. We're going to spend some coach XP. What is the ideal position group here? Probably defensive backs. I think so. All right, playoff time. I think we can do it. We're only one win away from the top spot. Just need to beat the right opponents win the right amount of games we can do this playoff time come on no we don't we finish eight and eight we lost 30 to 27 to the rams last week which uh i mean would we have made the playoffs i don't know if we would have regardless i'm sure you guys are gonna like a season four anyway as we're finally getting some, some confidence back and we re signed our players. We're in a good position. The draft isn't going to matter too much. The offseason is not going to matter too much because there's no one that we can really sign outside of a dominant wide receiver that's really going to help this team too much. Everyone's in position. Honestly, a wide receiver would help us out quite a bit. Really wish Minka Fitzpatrick had a face scan in the game as he was a, you know, a pretty high first round pick. He's up to a 97 overall. The team overall is pretty high. 96% scheme fit. It's just... I guess Bobby Wagner, who's so close, and Frank Randall, who uh, doesn't really fit that well. 96% though. Then on offense, we're in such a good spot. It's only 81% scheme fit, but look at all the starters who fit the scheme. This scheme fit experiment, I don't know if it works or not. I don't think it does. Jordan Lewis is a free agent. We could sign a cornerback. We don't need cornerback help. Deshaun Watson's here. Jadobi Awuzie, Sidney Jones is an interesting one. Any wideouts? Kenny Galladay. That's good. Well, we could go Chris Godwin. He's actually up to a pretty high overall. We don't really get Kenny Galladay ever. We also don't get Chris Godwin ever. So we got Chris Godwin. Good addition to the squad. We're now 80% scheme fit. How does that work? How do we get more scheme fit and then it's less scheme fit? What do you mean? Also signed Deontay Foreman, Samaj P. Ryan, and whoever Wellman is. I'm trying to get that power run scheme to fit as high as I can, and I need backups for that. I need one more power back, and I think we're going to be in good shape. Got Zach Zenner as well, and he's going to complete the power run system. I, I believe so. We have a ton of halfbacks at this point. It doesn't register because we have Hollowell, who does not fit the scheme. I think we're pretty much fine. There's no real point to draft. I mean, we only have a third round pick up here near the top. We took Giorgio Alexis, ranked number 51. So it's a great value pick, but I mean, we don't we don't need anything. The team's good, dude. We just need to win in simulation. So the CPU, of course, did not draft particularly well in simulation. Per usual, they just don't. They're just not as good, I don't have to tell you. 
But the team, the team is good. 91 offense, 95 defense. And um, I really like where everyone is. I don't even know where I'd upgrade. Right end, maybe? Right end would be the only one. And then offensively, I think, I think we're fine. So this is going to be the team for season number four, the final season. We better make the playoffs, dude. I mean, this is a good team. It's an 89 overall. Special teams is uh, is weighing it down. I haven't ever upgraded them, so I might as well do that. All right, upgraded that. I don't know. We got a pretty good team. Hoping for the best, expecting the worst per usual. But whenever I have a negative attitude, things always seem to go well. It's my natural habitat. See you in the playoffs, but not though, because we're gonna lose. Oh shit. We have a first round bye. 10 and 6, that's brutal that we did that. <laughs> 10 and 6 is a first round bye. How is that possible? Let's see how we did it. Uh, great preseason. But as you can see, we were not exactly dominant over the course of the season. I'm not sure how we got a first round bye. I'll pretty much tell you my expectation is that no one was good in the NFL because that's how it happens now. The top win, 13 and 3. How did we get a first round bye? What's the AFC looking like? We had the third best record in the AFC. Look at all these teams with nine wins making the playoffs. Uh, dude, the game is so weird sometimes. I'm not really complaining because at least we made the playoffs. We'll check out the stats and see how everybody did, how we got there. Offensively, we've never really had a juggernaut. Gordon Bjornsson, 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. The touchdowns, they're just not racking up. Rushing, Leonard Fournette really, really improved over Kenyon Drake. 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. Receiving, Chris Godwin was a beast in the slot. Over 1,000 yards, led our team in catches, 10 touchdowns as well. And then the rest, no one was really too impactful. Offensive line, Juwan James was bad, but the rest performed pretty well. Defensively, B-Wags led our team in tackles with 144. Tackles for loss, 14 from Leonard Williams, who also had 10.5 sacks, which led the team. The rest, no one really had anything too crazy. Interceptions, B-Wags with four. I hate that. I want to see cornerbacks and safeties lead the team in interceptions, but it is always, always, always a linebacker. There are never enough interceptions, and of course, there will be a ton of forced fumbles, and of course, there are. Seven for B-Wags, six for Levante David. This time, we have a ton of recoveries, though. Any defensive touchdowns? No. But I just simulation is just not right. As Zeke wins MVP, it'll be 10 and 6. Uh, 10 and 6 Cowboys. We have a 74 overall for the Saints. That was second in MVP. Who is Vaughn Garland? Who is that? It's not a real player, obviously, but w is he Drew Brees' successor? Who is this? Yeah, he's Drew Brees. It's, it's so playbook based. It has to be. Because Vaughn Garland is a 74 overall, 82 now, but he, he started out as a 74. Um, he's obviously way worse than our quarterback, yet he's blowing him out of the water in terms of stats. It's got to be, it's got to be all playbook based to see whether you can perform well or not, and that's that's frustrating to me because I feel like it should be on the team at some point. So it, it isn't scheme fit so much as it is maybe a scheme fit plus playbook. Play it comes down to playbook. I'm convinced. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Kareem Hunt. No Dolphins even in the conversation. B-Wags wins Defensive Player of the Year, though. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Michael Hernandez. Maybe a cousin of Aaron. Fun guy. We can hang out with him later. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Bernard Rice. And no Dolphins, because we didn't start any rookies, because why would we? We had a sick team. We still do. We still do. As far as experience points, skill points goes, uh, we have a decent bit. I'm going to spend these. We're going to have an even sicker team. And then we're going to play the moments in the playoffs. Mika Fitzpatrick, I think he got downgraded in terms of development. Yeah, he, he got to take star taken away. Why? I don't know. But we did boost him up. He's a 99 overall now. He's an absolute monster. The team is very good. I hope we do well. Playoff time. We are going up against the 9, 6, and 1 Cleveland Browns and I guess you could say the team is looking pretty godly <laughs> get it because his name's Chris I don't know if you can see his last name's Godwin hilarious 93 offense 
99 defense. 100% scheme fit on defense. We got 90% scheme fit on offense. I don't think it does anything. But we're going to play the moments against the Cleveland Browns. And this is to advance the AFC Conference Championship. They are a 91 overall. This is going to be a good game. I hate it when I'm like a 95, 96 overall and I'm playing a, like a 78 in the playoffs and they smash me. But it looks like the Browns might be pretty legit. Miles Garrett is a 99 everything. Speed rusher, power rusher, run stopper, doesn't matter. Larry Ogunjobi's a 99 run stopper. Man, these players were like developed really, really well. Denzel Ward, 98 man. 94 slot, 91 zone. Why didn't we have any of that going on? Oh yeah, because we uh, lost every game for like three years. All right, we're in the red zone. First time getting on the field. We've already forced a turnover. Don't know how that happened. Let's get in the end zone. There it is, over the middle. Chris Godwin inside the five. We're going to go into the hurry up. How do we score here? They were caught off guard there. They're in quarters. We're going to run the ball anyway. It's Hollowell end zone. Touchdown. We're going to go up here in the AFC divisional game. What is going on? They're playing Duck Duck Goose. I love it. Yeah, your Andrew Norwell is not catching up to Hollowell. There's no way. Go big or go home. It's a divisional round. 14-0 would be gigantic. We are keeping the drive alive. Gonna run a drag. Drag's gonna be open. Oh, it's not. That is, though. Back across the... We missed it! You gotta be kidding me, Bjornsson. We had an easy touchdown. This game hates me on all Madden. And yes, it is all Madden, in case you cared. Uh, I'll show you if you if you want to know, but I promise you it is all Madden because uh, on any other difficulty He makes that wide open throw Trying to get some points before the half we have a decent amount of time to do so Just all about taking advantage of our opportunities. I want to streak his sicky. We're gonna have a lot of streaks going on. Oh, he's open quick We're gonna throw it Mike Gesicki Inside the 20. Great catch. Great throw. Surprised I trusted Bjornsson to make that after that first terrible miss. The Browns got another field goal. Other than that, we are back on offense. Hollowell is the running back. No more Leonard Fournette in these sets. That's the worst spin move I have ever seen. And it's not even close. It's not even close. Can I throw the ball quickly? Kenny Stills. Aggressive catch. Touchdown. Are we, are we serious? What do you mean he didn't catch it? I'm challenging it. And I'm going to skip it too. I saw him put both feet in bounds. Upheld. There's no way. I watched. You're telling me this was not a touchdown? So he's open. There's the ball. Are you kidding me? Hold on. What is this? Watch this. So it's it's apparently the right leg that doesn't get on get down. So he has got his right leg up in the air. Unbelievable. Catches the ball. Watch the right leg. He's about to bring it down. He's like, nah, we're gonna we're gonna plant with the left and bring the right back up so we can land out of bounds. How do you do that? You have to go out of your way. It's like he's riding a bicycle. Finally bringing out the defense, and we've got a beastly bunch. Who are some of these names? Lober? Collins? Who is out here? What is going on? Anyway, they get it on fourth down. I uh, I don't know why I was on a D-lineman. But uh, that's not me. And he just juked out the CPU. That's super frustrating. And somehow the game is not over yet. It's 13 to 24 now. Can we just end the game? Is that too much to ask? I'm putting in Leonard Fournette, who's a 76 overall. Apparently out of uh, this formation, they're counting it. He's fumbled twice the seat. I don't care. Don't fumble the ball, Leonard. This game's killing me. Oh my God, they scored? 
And they're going for the onside kick. I can't believe what I'm watching. This team is choking unbelievably difficult or unbelievably badly. And this is difficult for me to watch because they put me in a moment where I'm recovering an onside kick. And if I didn't know the audible to switch to onside kick recovery, we would have been in a regular return. It doesn't matter. They get it anyway. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. And of course, no plays. All right. Let's put this to bed. I cannot believe what's happening. Get pressure. I need a user pick. They're going to go to the flat. I'm going to hit him. Levante David drills him. They need a touchdown. They have one timeout yet. We're going to blitz heavy. Get over Bobby. 45 seconds. Is this Jakeem Grant? That's mine. I hate all Madden with a burning passion. That's a user pick to ice the game, and it's dropped. How? What do you mean? We're obviously getting no pressure because it's this game. What is this angle? That's picked off. Thank you, Trevor Williams. Go down. Oh, my God. That game was stressful. They came back on the CPU in simulation so quickly. It is unbelievable. What a shot here, by the way. Yeah, nice ass, cameraman. What are you doing? Bjornsson was okay. Baker Mayfield was not. No fumbles for uh, anyone crazy. Gasicki with a touchdown. Did anyone fumble as far as receivers go? I don't know. They had four turnovers and only three interceptions, though. Uh, sacks. We got... A combined sack the entire game. Interceptions. Trevor Williams, Mika Fitzpatrick, Levante David. Someone forced a fumble. Othniel Carson and Bobby Wagner. Carson recovered. No defensive touchdowns. What a divisional game. 24-19. to 19. Really doesn't tell the full story of the domination here today. And the almost choke. We almost lost that game. We were so close. So close to losing. All right, time to advance the week. Got a ton of coach XP. It doesn't really matter at this point. We're going to face the 13-3 and Oakland Raiders. We got a 93 offense, 92 defense. If this team loses, I'm going to be remarkably upset. They're an 88 overall. We scrape into the playoffs, barely. Raiders go 13-3, and which is which just a much worse team. It's just frustrating. I like to build the best team and then have the best record. It's very rare. Minka's at a 99. That's someone who developed pretty well. Like... I understand, obviously now, it wouldn't make sense for there to be a baseball field on because they renovate uh, after the baseball field's over and they cover that up. They don't renovate, but they cover it up. And clearly, whatever month it is, like December or January at this point, as that is floated over my head beautifully. That's a great pass. I can't even be mad. But I wonder, like, if in uh, preseason games, the baseball field's out there. I really doubt it, but it would be cool. All right, two-minute drill. Can we score? We're going to look to air it out. We got the strong arm quarterback for it. And we got a good one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's going to be a great pass to Kenny Stills who caught the ball. Ah, that's a great catch, Kenny. Thank you. That was weird. Larmy Tunsil, what are you doing? What team do we have out here? What is going on? And they're, they're up 17-3 now. 24-3. I don't think we're going to win this one, boys. 31-3. to I haven't had a moment in, like, since the second fucking quarter. We have two minutes to come back. Do you guys think we can do it? There's Kenny Stills. It's not even an accurate pass. Oh, thank God. We're going to get crushed here in the AFC Conference Championship. But, hey, at the end of the day, we made the AFC Conference Championship. So, that's something we can uh, tell our moms. Gordon Bjornsson was not great. That's kind of what you got to say about that. He just wasn't great. Two of those interceptions were mine, but also, like, we didn't get any opportunities to score via the moments. I didn't like that too much. So when we're down, like, what, 17-3 to going into the half, and then I don't get any opportunity at any point 
to hop back in the game until it's late in the fourth quarter. That's a little bit frustrating. But that's going to be the video, guys, until we, uh, until we meet again. Because at some point, we might revisit this Dolphins rebuild. Revisit the rebuild. It's a series I did an episode of two years ago. Maybe we'll see it. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. 93 offense, 99 defense. The team is sick, regardless of the result. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.